most of the enemies by defeating them though we do get the lightning bolt which can help us take out this pink mage boss that we fought in the previous level our next boss is a cyclops enemy with who we fought before hit him with the lightning bolt that i had one left of and then a few mace hits to take care of him he did give me a health upgrade however my health was full so it didn't really help out too much and then we move over and it's time for the actual boss of the stage. Unlike the other ones, we don't have to fight a bigger boss after this one. He actually moves and attacks like the mages that we fought multiple times throughout the game. So you actually can just move in him a few times with the mace. However, his projectiles are definitely a pain because they do multiple hits sometimes as they go through you. If you have a large amount of health, you can just duel it out with him walking in close and continuing to hit him. However, if you do run low on health, you can jump over his projectiles to avoid taking any damage. Once he's defeated, we move on to our fourth stage. Now this stage is set up in a cave and it's just like we did before, and we actually start off with the enemy we just fought in the previous level, however this one is slightly easier, but I definitely do recommend jumping over his projectiles to avoid them. Sometimes it's really impossible to dodge over him, you'll accidentally mess up and take damage. But since it is the beginning of the level, you want to make sure you at least have some health as you continue on. Now as we move on, he did give us the orange wave ability so we can take out this fish monster. whose main attack is just to walk towards you and hit you. However, with that wave ability we got from the previous mini boss, we were actually able to just keep him definitely far enough away from us that he didn't even actually hit us. As we move on, we have another one of the bosses from the previous stage. I am ducking down in front of him, and when you duck down you can use the shield to dodge his projectiles or just continue doing the strategy of jumping over his projectiles to avoid them as well. Now thankfully he gives us a health upgrade which gives us our armor back. We have another zombie that we fought before, take care of him pretty quickly and continue on. Next up another one of the fish enemies, same deal with the zombies, keep a distance between you and him and he'll be taken care of in only a few seconds. Watch out for the bats, and then we move on to our large minotaur, which actually is our boss of the stage. Use the mace to keep a distance between you and him, avoiding his weapon if all possible. Sometimes you're gonna get hit for absolutely no reason. But thankfully he's pretty easy to take care of, and by defeating him, it allows us to move on to the final stage of the game, this Hall of Mirrors. It's interesting to note, however, if you did not pick up the four relics, you can come straight to the final boss and you actually bypass the Hall of Mirrors and go right into the boss's lair where the boss will proceed to kill you instantly. However, it is kind of funny that they don't even allow you to beat this stage until you actually have all the relics. Now in this level, we have to do a mirror match against the exact clone of ourselves that attacks as soon as we do. Duck down usually in front of him is my strategy and just hit him a whole bunch of times. He'll go down rather easy. By defeating him, he gives us our armor back and then right afterwards is the group of fairies to give us our health back. Now here's the final boss, and I recommend switching over to your sword, and what you do is you jump in close to him and try to hit him, you have to hit him actually in the mouth. When you jump towards him, you hit him. Now you're going to take damage from the fireballs, unless sometimes you can dodge through them, but most of the time you're going to take damage from him. Really what you got to avoid out for is actually running into his tail, which projects out anytime you get near him. It's one of those bosses which I think is impossible not to take at least some damage while fighting. Thankfully though, with every uh, one of the relics that we've picked up throughout the game, that we have a good amount of health, and we have good armor, so he ends up not being too tough of a final boss. Just repeat the strategy of jumping towards him and hitting him in the mouth, watching out for the fireballs if at all possible, but you're going to have to take damage, and watching out for that tail. After only about a minute or two, he gets taken care of, he turns gray, and now we move on actually to the ending of the game. We get to see our main hero, Garadin, who the whole point of the game, like most old games, was to save the princess. And there she is. She is now saved. Our main hero has defeated the evil dark Larza, the big dragon we just defeated. And now we have a happy ending. We move outside to a shot of the castle. It's now daytime. It's supposed to be joyous. We have the ending going on here. And then our credits will then begin to roll. Castle of Dragon is one of those games on the NES that has unintentional difficulty. The bad programming leading to bad hit detection is what ends up causing this game to be such a pain. 
You end up losing over half your health sometimes by a simple fireball projectile from the enemy that could get stuck in your body and goes through you. Other times, you're fighting an enemy who's far away from you and you end up taking damage from them, sometimes multiple hits of damage, for no reason as well. A lot of that probably has to do with the fact it's being an arcade port and maybe they rushed it and didn't have time to do a whole lot. Like previously mentioned though, this is the prequel to Swordmaster, and in Swordmaster, which came out less than a year later from this title, they fixed a lot of things and made the game at least a little bit more playable, however Swordmaster definitely still has a lot of issues as well. Now this is also the company's really its first major title. It released one other game before this one, being a quiz game for the regular NES, with Castle of Dragon really being its first major arcade title as well as its first major NES title. Now as the credits finish up, we see thank you for playing, and followed up by the always glorious The End. And with that, that's going to end another edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.